Hi everyone, welcome back to Tipperary Library Storytime. I'm Sarah and I work in Cashel Library. Today our book is called Who Ate Auntie Iris? It's written by Sean Taylor, illustrated by Hannah Shaw and published by Francis Lincoln. Look where Auntie Iris lives. She's my favourite aunt and sometimes my mum brings me over to spend the afternoon with her. But mum says, my nose twitches every time I get here, and when a chinchilla's nose twitches, it means there's danger in the air. Auntie Iris just smiles and tells us there's no need at all to worry, but she does climb up the stairs in quite a bit of a hurry. After all, on the first floor, there's a family of bears, and every time we go past their flat, they give us hard, bare stairs. On the second floor, there's this crocodile, and I think there's something a bit too friendly about his toothy smile. Then on the third floor, there's a whole lot of wolves, and every time they look at us, one of them always drools. Luckily, no one at all lives on the fourth floor, so it feels safe from up there to Auntie Iris' door. Or at least it did. Until last Thursday afternoon, because Auntie Iris went down to put the rubbish out, and she didn't come back. I looked outside. All I saw was her hat. I crept down the stairs. Not a sign of her. And it seemed pretty definite to me that someone had eaten Auntie Iris. I had to find out who'd done it, so I went to the first floor and, although my nose was twitching with worry, I gave a tap at the door. Next thing it opened wide and a bear looked out. I said to him, who ate Auntie Iris? The bear gave a scratch of his snout. It wasn't us, he replied. We were all sitting watching TV. It's our favourite cookery programme today. We watch it every week. He seemed to be telling the truth, so I went to the second floor. I didn't like the thought of those teeth, but I gave a knock on the door. Next thing it opened up and there was the crocodile. I said to him, who ate Auntie Iris? He gave me a friendly smile. It wasn't me, he replied, and I'm sorry you'll have to excuse me. Some friends have come round to help me install a brand new jacuzzi. He seemed to be telling the truth, so I went to the third floor. I knew it must have been those wolves, and I banged quite hard on the door. One of them opened it up, but only a little bit. I asked him, who ate Auntie Iris? And he gave his lips a lick. He said, who ate your auntie? Not us. We hardly know her. We are all of us having a quiet time in, practicing our yoga. He seemed to be telling the truth too. So what was I meant to do? And who ate Auntie Iris? I carried on up the stairs thinking, was it the wolves? Was it the crocodile? Was it the bears? But then I heard a voice. It said, ah, so there's my hat. It was Auntie Iris. She was all right. I thought someone had eaten you, I said. Oh no, she smiled back. I just bumped into my new neighbours and they showed me round their flat. She led me back up the stairs. I asked, are the new neighbours okay? Auntie Iris said, they're lions. I turned round. They were looking our way. Chinchillas for neighbours, said a lion. I can't say how happy we feel. We'd very much like to ask you round and have you all for a meal. Auntie Iris just smiled and told me, there's no need at all to worry. But she did climb up the stairs in quite a bit of a hurry.
the end. And our next book today is called The Great Granny Gang. This book is written and illustrated by Judith Kerr and published by HarperCollins. Here comes the fearless granny gang, the youngest, 82. They leap down from their granny van and there's nothing they can't do. What's this? Your chimney needs rebuilding. Old Meg will come in record time. She is exceptionally skilled in repairs that may involve a climb. Your car won't start. Maureen will fix all faults down to the smallest raffle. And her sister Beth, aged 96, is known for being good with cattle. Ballooning, Mavis Jones forgets all else. It is her favourite sport. Jane Poo will babysit your pets. She's not particular what sort. And lion tamer Madge can thrill the crowds at circuses and fairs. And Maud, with her pneumatic drill, contributes much to road repairs. One day, Miss Jones, while flying low and peering through the fading light, observed a robbery in full flow and not a single cop in sight. A baker cried in great distress, we're being robbed. A gang of hoodies has broken in. Help, SOS. They're making off with all our goodies, all freshly baked this very day. I don't know what my mum will say. Granny alert, cried Mavis Jones. Emergency, prepare to raid. And listening on their granny phones, the grannies galloped to her aid. Then Mavis said, hand back those goodies and fast before my gang gets here which caused the leader of the hoodies to answer with a nasty sneer. Oh, little granny, how you scare me. Oh, I'm so frightened, I'm struck dumb. Oh, little granny, please, please spare me. And then the grannies, then she saw the grannies come. And come and come. and come, and come. The leading hood went white with shock, all gone the nasty sneery smile. He stammered, oh, they've got a croc, a croc, a crocodile. Another begged, oh, please don't bite. I will renounce my life of crime. And then he wept and held on tight and hoped that lions couldn't climb. Then all the hoods cried, we surrender. The, your gang is the greatest, none can match it. But we are only young and tender. So granny, please put down your hatchet. And please restrain that raging cow and do not point that dreadful drill. For we'll be good and virtuous now, awash with kindness and goodwill. And hoods no more, the gang took flight and disappeared into the night. Well done, said Mavis. Great success. Congratulations to the team. The baker cried, but oh, the mess. All squishy bits and yucky cream. It's very sad to see my mum's delicious cakes reduced to crumbs. Nay, came a voice, don't worry, Poppet. I watched your little spot of bother. I thought that batch of cakes might cop it, and so I quickly baked another. And there appeared the baker's mother. Ladies, she said, I baked this banquet to thank you. What you did was great, so let no member of your gang quit until you've emptied every plate. The new cakes were the very best the grannies ever tasted. And as the lions ate the rest, none in the end was wasted. And so the grannies work bore fruit 
they even gained a new recruit. Thanks for tuning in everyone, we'll see you again soon, bye!